Claire, thank you very much indeed. Uh, good afternoon to you all uh, from the main arena here. Yeah, we're about to see what should be a fabulous conclusion of uh, the small and medium championship started this morning uh, with the jumping continued with the agility this afternoon and now we have honed it down to the best of the best this evening nine small dogs and nine intermediate dogs will be going and the first of the nine small dogs are matthew burdett and brew five-year-old shetland sheepdog fourth in the agility smallest dog for matthew but a big attitude graham as we prepare to see the first dog give us your overall thoughts about what's ahead for the next half hour or so excitement great agility and everybody having fun that'll do nicely and we're off and running very early over the dog walk is brew and matthew picking up five faults if you're watching for the first time you have to make contact uh, with the white markers at the bottom of the dog walk if you don't you pick up five faults that's five more faults uh, collected by matthew and brew not quite the start they would have wanted first of the nine small dogs picking up those through the weaves onto the a-frame same rules apply on the a-frame you must make contact at the bottom over the u move jump same rule gotta hit that white and actually the seesaw has to touch down before brew can leave it so that's absolutely fine there little tight left hander and again more hesitation and uh, and that is an elimination because of picking up 15 faults on you go Graham yep uh, there we are really good round not the start as you say he would have put it was actually for three uh, eliminate uh, th sorry three refusals you cannot have uh, three refusals on the course if you do elimination and there you go he signaled the third one and the crossed arms means the dog's been eliminated Sizzle and Katrina Hand, Shetland Sheepdog, five years of age, runners up last year. They will be looking to make an impact this time round, and that's a fine start over the dog walk, but again, just missing the contact at the end, and that'll be an infuriating five faults for Sizzle and for Katrina, part of Team GB, second year at Crufts this. But of course, they don't know what is going to come behind them, so they will go flat out and put as good a time as possible, and you never know. Those uh, five faults that might not be uh, as big a drawback as it could appear earlier on. And this is quick and neat and tidy from, from Sizzle, from Forfar, Katrina and Sizzle. 37.2 and just the five faults, Graham. Yes, just the five faults. This dog is already an agility champion, but she's had five faults. You can only be awarded the title of agility champion with a clear round, but in her case, uh, she can still win, but she's already an agility champion. Les Pierce took a tumble uh, at the last this afternoon in the agility, originally lost points. Those points were reinstated. So runner up in the agility, despite that tumble at the last and making a good start here as well is les and fire the working cocker what about the weaves quick neat and tidy a great sight always give you great images here from crufts on channel four this is developing into a very tidy round Through the tunnel they go. it's still clear there's a real gasp among the crowd there thought something untoward had happened it hasn't 33 34 that's really a good effort indeed from les and from fire 36.4 and clear number one that's the one to beat graham he is and uh, this is les's first time at crofts he's done amazingly well this is a great combination and they've performed just about the best of their ability there was just a moment's hesitation there but he made up for it Mark Wingate win from Derby with Snazzy, six-year-old Sheltie. Third last year. Bit of a mystery dog, Snazzy. Sometimes very noisy, sometimes keeps her, her thoughts to herself. Concentrates on the job. Just a little bit of zigzag in there, but it's OK. Might have lost a few fractions of a second. Have to enter those weaves from the right-hand side. Beautiful style going through the weaves as well. The A-frame, good contact with the, the white markers at the bottom. Over the U-move as well, gathering pace. Seesaw is good too. This is looking there or thereabouts, providing everything stays together in the concluding part of this round. Big, tight right-hander. This is going to be good. It's going to be up at the sharp end for sure. 36.9, second place at the moment then for Snazzy. 
Really great effort there from Mark and Snazzy. This is a fantastic little Shelty. Really gave his all. Uh, as I say, he won't go home thinking I could have done better. That was about as good as he could have done. Well done, Mark. Lauren Langman, second dog, Blink. Very popular. Blink loves Crofts, and uh, we all love seeing her here. A couple of tickets. Loves the big arenas and the big crowds. And will scamp around this course and give full value for, for money, for sure. That's Blink, the working cocker. Nine years of age now, but full of running, full of vigour, full of enthusiasm. Tremendous through the weaves. A-frame, that's good as well. Over the U-move too. Seesaw, lovely, lovely. Tunnel's good. Again, these times are very competitive. We had one decided by just a couple of a thousandth of a second on day one. This is going to be, is going to be up there until underlining how unforgiving these things can be. Right at the end, right at the end, Graham, and it unraveled. It did. You see the dog running around the tunnel, so that was a refusal. If you didn't want to be eliminated, you had to go back and do it again. She thought, well, I'm not going to win this, so she carried on picking up the elimination and the dreaded crossed arms. Competition hotting up now. Dave Munnings will go for it. Nothing to lose with Boost. Winners of these small singles on day two. Reigning champions as well. Five early faults, though. Second in the jumping this morning. But we're reaching the stage of the competition where putting your foot on the gas is the only option. All got to go for it. Over the U move. Good stuff over that uh, seesaw as well five faults the time to beat is 36.4 and clear of course only a couple of clear rounds so far well look at that well inside the time 34.0 and that's third place because of the faults a very unusual fault there off the end of the dog walk dave knows that there are some fantastic dogs coming in behind him really had to push which caused that fault one of the fantastic dogs is Spider, working Cocker Spaniel, Lily Woodford, the handler from Northamptonshire. Got a real chance, these two looking really good. Third in the agility, with a little bit in hand, we felt, but again, infuriating. Over the dog walk, missing that contact point, and that will be five faults for Lily and for Spider. Can only put this down to pressure, Jim. I've never seen quite so many dogs in a, in a championship final missing the end of the dog walk, where they know they've just got to go uh, as quick as they can. Nobody remembers who came second in this sport. <laughs> That's harsh. That's harsh. Continuing the round, though, the time is, time is good, as we would expect uh, from Spider. 36.6 the time, then. And uh, with, those, with those faults, into fourth place. And you get to this stage, and they're all good, Jim, and they're separated by fractions. Look at Selfie. The Merle Shelty, a really pretty one. First in the jumping this morning. They won the small stakes last year at the London International Horse Show. These have a real chance overall. Bronze as well at the World Cup, so they're a season combination. We really like Martin, and he was the one who handled the dog that won by two one thousandths of a second on day one. So he's used to small margins. And at the moment, Selfie and Martin are going exceptionally well. Time looks good, no faults as well. Remember the time to beat it's 36.4, 32, 3, 4. Well, beaten it, they've taken a massive great bite out of it and Martin Reed goes top of the pops smashed it smashed it great great effort there by Martin 15 months ago that dog was actually a little bit nervy didn't quite have its confidence it has come on in leaps and bounds well deserved but now we've got Ashley Butler spoke to her beforehand and what a task for Ashley he was with us in the commentary box a welcome addition in the commentary box yesterday with Sully all of you will know this dog First in the agility this afternoon. Very, very competitive and so keen to win. 34.4, the time to be. Off goes Sully and off goes Ashley. Good at the bottom of the dog walk this time. No faults there. Moving really sharply as well, Sully. Tunnel is fine. How about those weaves? Been through those before at pace too. 
little left-hander, 16 seconds gone, over the A-frame, good contact at the bottom of that, over the Yumu, this is looking quick and classy, and they're right up with the clock as well. And that twisting part of the course, and they've done it, I'm going to count them down, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 34.6, just outside it, 34.6 plays 34.4. My goodness me, it's those two thousandths of a second once again. Well, Ashley, you could tell she was straining every sinew, trying to get every little bit of speed out of Sully. I mean, he is nine years of age now, but what a close, great, fantastically entertaining competition, Jim. Well, we told you it would be good. We told you it would be close, but how close was that? Just confirm the result for you. Look at that, 34.458 against 34.693. Les Pierce took a tumble earlier on, but he's good enough for third. Mark Wingate winning fourth, and Dave Munnings makes the top five. First of nine, medium dogs then, Joe Gleed and Topic, the five-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Good combined scores, really, to get here, these two. Very, very consistent, Graham. Yes, they are, and uh, working Cocker Spaniels becoming increasingly popular, especially in the small and medium category. Joe Gleed has been around for a long time, consistently trains great dogs, uh, and is always in the mix, Jim. Always in the mix and very much uh, in the frame for a good result here. 23 seconds gone and no fault so far. And, and Topic right on form. Little yelp going over that one. And this will really set a goal. Oh, I was going to say it was set a really good stand. And right at the end, an elimination from nowhere. The most unexpected elimination from Crufts 2023. Just, I, well, it's not often I'm lost for words, I just... I can promise you, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, that the agility this week has been absolutely outstanding. And as we saw, the future of the sport with our juniors, their Open World Championship team, led by uh, Greg Derrick with uh, all the support team from the Kennel Club, is in great hands. And that championships is returning to Great Britain this year. So watch out for the news in the agility press. Thank you to the Kennel Club for their tremendous support. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our presentation party. You move have been amazing supporters of Crufts, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce John Pierce on behalf of You Move and uh, former secretary of the Kennel Club, uh, Catherine Mansfield, to make the presentations. First of all, he is a man who is respected throughout the world and he's been judging the championships here at Crofts 2023. We say thank you to this man for delivering the very best agility competitions the big ring can see. Well done indeed to Gary Murphy. Okay, let's present our champion, ladies and gentlemen, the Crufts Agility Champion 2023 in the small height with, get it with, eager to work, Martin Reed. Actually, I got no food. <laughs> yeah. And the reserve ticket going to Agility Champion, the Closet Monster of Ashburn, Ashley Butler. The medium, Crufts Agility Champion 2023, with Vaquero Cross My Heart, Tony Dawkins. And the reserve ticket, with Agility Champion Fan Dabby Dozy, Munchkin Jack, 
Dalton Meredith. Please keep the applause going, folks, because now it is lap of honour time.